Hello, we're going to look at cybersecurity over the next set of, I don't know how many videos, a lot of videos. We're going to start now by talking about some cyber threats and start thinking about why people might want to attack a system. So before we even get there, let's define cybersecurity itself with quite a admittedly wordy definition. So cybersecurity consists of the processes, practices and technologies designed to protect networks, computers, programs and data from attack, damage or unauthorized access. Very wordy. Let's try and break it down a little bit. Not something you need to sort of think about or memorize, but it's useful to consider the main components of cybersecurity. So first of all, I should maybe say that cyber as a word, as a prefix, just means related to computers, related to networks, you know, thinking of cyberbullying, and you hear cyber attack, cyber threat, and so on, just related to a computer. So the first part of this definition in blue here Really what this means is what are we going to do to have some form of protection. Processes, practices are more about policies, which we'll look at, and technologies are more about what actually are we going to do to protect our data and systems. What actual devices or software can we put into place to do some protection. And in that turquoise sort of color, we've got networks, computers, programs, and data. Those are our, what we call assets, our important items, important concepts. Sometimes if it's intellectual property, we are trying to protect. We can shorten this to systems, a system being any combination of these. And finally, in red, we've got the actual consequences, where we just have an attack, which will cause damage or will involve some access, which is not normal access, it's unauthorized. And we'll come back to that last point in a future video, looking at hacking. And really the whole one-line summary of our whole unit here is thinking about how we are able to defend our assets against threats. An asset being, as I said earlier, some important item or concept we want to protect. So, um, for example, our defense might be making a firewall, that would be a technology, uh, in having a firewall either as hardware or software, which is maybe there to protect one of our assets, which might be a server containing lots of important customer information, and our threat might be a hacker who wants to gain access to that server, and therefore that firewall is there to try and stop him or her attacking that server. There is a subtle difference between an attack and a threat, so it's worth just distinguishing between the two, and I'm not gonna write cyber threat every time, so we're just talking about obviously here computers, not someone threatening uh, in person. So a threat has a potential to cause harm to an asset, so it's not actually happening yet, it has the potential. Also, a threat can be both an intentional act or either an unintentional act, because you could have a threat of flooding or a threat of a fire, that would cause harm to an asset, potentially, but it's not intentional. Um, but it could also be a person who wants to attack, because an attack is actually where you are trying to damage, destroy, or steal an asset. You actually are trying to do it. So really, an attack has happened, or is happening, if you're uh, reacting quickly, whereas a threat might happen. So a threat is something which you are thinking about, and it could cause harm to an asset. To give a slightly non-cyber example, a bank will be thinking about what threats are against them, and we'll be saying, well, a burglar could come in and steal some money. Well, while that's still being considered, that would be a threat. As soon as a burglar actually goes in and starts to steal money, either online or in person, it is then an attack. So before we look at more concrete examples in future videos, we should talk now about why exactly do people want to do this? Why do people want to do cyber attacks? And it can just be for their own fun or just for a challenge. And this might be some self achievement, self-satisfaction, or it could just be to impress others. You can imagine a peer dynamic where one person tries to do a break into a network and the other person wants to better them and then the other person wants to better that and you kind of have that spiraling out of control. It can be fairly innocuous or it can be quite a serious problem. Um, even if it's a challenge, it may not be for money necessarily. But what is for money is industrial espionage. So this is not unique to cyber attacks, right? Unfortunately, industrial espionage happens just generally. Um, and this is where a competitor, like a business, is wanting to steal intellectual property off another business. And they're trying to do this for their own financial gain, so to get more money. Intellectual property are things like designs, blueprints, etc. Things which might make a lot of money for the company. The word industrial refers to the fact that this is a business doing it, it's a commercial activity, and espionage is spying. Of course, this is illegal, but companies will always try and find ways to find out about competitors, even legally. From our context, we're thinking about mostly somebody trying to break in to a database or break in to a computer to try and steal some designs or something like that. And really, I've highlighted financial gain because it can be its own reason. Of course, it can be a company, it can be an individual trying to attack a system to 
gain money. And this might be because they're trying to steal data or steal information and then trying to sell that on afterwards. They might try and steal some credit cards numbers and then sell it to other groups or use it themselves to commit identity theft and fraud, which is where you are taking somebody else's identifiable information like their address, their name, their bank details and using it to buy products or using it to sign up for expensive loans and stuff like that. Of course, again, this is very illegal. Um, by the way, data and information are slightly different. Data is really unprocessed information. Information is data which has had some analysis done on it. So information tends to be more valuable because a company has spent a long time potentially analyzing it and cleaning it up and make it useful. And so if that's stolen, that might be more of a problem than if it's the raw data was stolen. So cyber attacks may not happen actually because of money. It may just be because of some personal attack, which is I think more common than you may realize where somebody is trying to get back at somebody, trying to get revenge, and it can be against either a company or just an individual person. Maybe they're trying to release embarrassing information. Maybe they're trying to release some sensitive business information. The idea being just to cause revenge. And the last reason we can mention for now is an attacker may do this just to cause disruption generally, trying to cause chaos. They may be for their own fun as well, just they might enjoy seeing a company struggle to operate normally, but it may also be to try and cause some monetary loss. The company maybe can't make any money if their systems are down. Also reputation loss. You know, imagine if your bank website went down, you can access your money. That would cause massive uh, damage to the company's reputation, how they're seen by others, and that would cause disruption to their normal operation. An example of this might be if an attacker is doing a denial of service attack on a website, the website might go down and it would cause the customers not to be able to use it. 